has done. Somebody want to thank him for what he's doing. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God. Yes, sir. Amen. We bless God for being in the house of prayer. One more time. Amen. I ask y'all to thank God for the angels of the house. Amen. Amen. Pastor and Lady Brown. Come on, y'all. It's good noise. That's good noise. I don't have to tell Calvary how to care for the man and woman of God. We're here tonight and uh, 13th, I'm going to read the program, says anniversary, 13th anniversary, amen. I often say to pastors that all you need for an anniversary is for the year to roll around again, amen. So when I come in times like these, I I want to see if I can get folk to shift it to from an anniversary to an appreciation. Amen. Yeah. Because an appreciation means, yeah, I like that smile, sister. I remember. And I thank God for the covering that he's given us. Appreciation says, Pastor, I remember. Y'all came and prayed for me. Uh, and appreciation says, Pastor, I did not forget. And I place you, First Lady, and the family above the Atlanta Housewives or wherever it is that's coming on tonight. I ain't getting no help here tonight. When you appreciate somebody, you set a little something aside. Well, you set something aside because you don't want to miss the day to be able to tell them through God, thank you. Amen, amen. All me and my wife need for our 34th wedding anniversary is just to make it another year. But it's something else when that day get there. And she grabbed me by the ears. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Kiss me on the forehead. Say, I still love your old ugly self. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen, amen, amen. I feel appreciated. <laughs> amen, amen. Beloved, we want to share with you tonight. Um, hallelujah passage of scripture you all are familiar with and uh, 13th amen uh, I'm just going to shift for tonight 13th appreciation and, and uh, I want to pull this text from Numbers 13 y'all alright Numbers Old Testament book of Numbers 13 very familiar passage of scripture a lot to read there. I, we don't have the time to do that. I want to give you the sense of it. Y'all all right? So we're going to move through the chapter with some selected verses to give you the sense. Y'all all right? Bless God for the office of the Calvary Outreach. Bless God for the wonderful congregants of Calvary Outreach. Our prayer when we leave here tonight is that God continue to bless you and use you mightily Amen. in the community. Amen. Amen. And nothing shall be impossible to the vision that God has given you. Y'all all right? Amen. Amen. Numbers chapter 13. You have a say, Amen. All right, y'all walk with me. Verse 1 says, and the Lord. I need y'all to see that. And the Lord spake on. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men 
that they may search, that they may search, that they may search the land of Canaan, which, which I, which, don't miss this, which I give <laughs> unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Y'all all right? Drop down with me to verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out uh, the land of Canaan mm -hmm. and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad or what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in, in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether it be wood therein or not. And be ye of, and be ye of uh, good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of first ripe grapes. Y'all all right? Yes. All right. Amen. Drop with me to verse 23. And they came unto the brook of Eschol and cut down from the fence a branch, a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between two mm -hmm. men upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. My God, my God. Verse 25, and they returned from, <laughs> from searching of the land after, help me y'all, uh, 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 40 days. Y'all okay? Babies, amen. Love them babies, amen. Verse 27, and they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sit us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwelleth in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Enoch there. God have mercy. And the Amalekites dwelled in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Ammonites, and dwelled in the mountain, and the Canaanites dwelled by the sea, and the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able, wait a minute, to overcome it. Well, I need to read it one more time. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched upon the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone and searched it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Last verse. There we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in their own sight as grasshoppers. Right, amen, amen. I want to talk about a 40-day shopping spree. Go ahead, take a seat. Oh, there's something in there for you. There's something in there for you. 40 day shopping spree. As I came home, I noticed that Mrs. Anderson was sitting there satisfied with the life that the Lord had given her. I walk in and I say, dear, I have a surprise for you. The Lord has been so good. I am getting ready.
to finance for you because God has financed for me a 40-day shopping spree. Now, y'all a whole lot more quiet than Miss Anderson would be. What would you do if out of nowhere, unexpectedly, that you would have a voice to say to you, I have prepared something for you with no limitations, but allow you the opportunity to go on an all expense paid 40 day shopping spree. I need to break it down because I ain't got no time to that. God decided that because Israel was the apple of his eye, y'all ain't saying nothing. His wife, his bride, the one that he delivered out of bondage, God decided, watch this, to initiate without her request. Bonafide, all expense paid. 40 days. Shopping spree. God said, I want y'all to know that the place that I am sending you to, watch this, the mall that I'm sending y'all to has everything that you all can possibly need. 40 days you're going to be able to walk through that mall. 40 days you're going to be able to purchase. Get out of there with anything and everything that you desire. Don't worry about the cost. All expenses paid. I need y'all to let that marinate. When the Lord sends you a blank check, tells you, I'm going to give you something without restriction, and you can count on the voice that sends you. Y'all ain't hearing me. Now, it's something if your old jacked up boyfriend trying to send you on a he done fail you so many times. I understand that you don't believe him. But, but when Jehovah Jireh. The one who says, don't worry, I am your provider. When Jehovah Shalom, the one that says, if you're without peace, I'll give you peace. Jehovah Tishkanu, who said that if you're without righteousness, I'll give you righteousness. Y'all ain't in here. The God that said that if in fact there is something on your mind and in your heart that has not yet been invented by man, don't worry about it. Just come to me because I am El Elohim. I'm the God that covers everything. Somebody holler, God's got it. Whatever you need. I'm just trying to get y'all ready. 40-day shopping spree. So first thing y'all need to do, I'm going to get to the text in a minute. First thing y'all need to do is make sure you wear comfortable shoes. 40 days of shopping, I don't need your feet hurting. Huh? Make sure you stay hydrated. And make sure you keep in mind that it's all expense. Look at God. So we go on the 40 day shopping spree. The Lord said I want to make sure because, because you have brothers and sisters who have no problem hating on you. I'm going to be fair. Somebody holler fair. So God said I'm going to be fair. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take from the tribe, every tribe, one man. Strong man. Yeah. Ain't no help in here. Yeah. I want a man of capabilities, a man of substance, a man of muscle. Why? Because somebody got to carry the bags. I'm setting it up for you. 40 day shopping spree. Comfortable shoes, ready to walk. Got me somebody strong, ready to carry the bag. Y'all ready? Call your mama and tell you she's going to be missing you for 40 days. 
Got places to go, things to see, and things to acquire. God sends them out. And watch this. The spies go out into the land as promised. I ain't going to be long, but I'm going to be strong. Listen to me. What God does with them, I want y'all to see in the text. What God does with them is that God, watch this, is setting Israel up for the promise. But before he gives them the promise, he gives them a peak seat. Mama know what I'm talking about. Before he shows them the whole land, before they possess the promise, God says, I got to first of all, let y'all peep in and see if it is as I said. Pastor, I'm coming for you in a minute. But the Lord is trying to help us to understand that there is many of us in the body of Christ. We put up a good game, but we still walking by sight. It's still by faith. Because if we were walking by faith, oh yeah, Calvary Outreach would already turn folk out of there upside down. Somebody's talking. There's a bold vision. Somebody holler bold. There's a bold vision that God has given the angel of the house. But everybody ain't ready. We still living from Sunday to Sunday spirituality. Oh, I can make it to Bible class. I, I can make it from Sunday to Sunday. I got enough Jesus and boldness in me to make it from Sunday to Sunday. But God has given past a vision far beyond one Sunday morning. And somebody else in the house got to be bold enough to be able to see what he see, even if you can't see what he see. Look like the front row ready. I don't know about the rest of y'all. Look at what I'm trying to show y'all is that what God is getting, look at, God is getting ready to do a big thing, but what God is getting ready to do, God says literally, y'all don't believe me yet. All that walking, all that blessing, all that showing, all that keeping, all that healing, all that making your enemies leave you alone. You, y'all don't believe me yet. God said, y'all allow me to bring y'all this far. But y'all ain't ready to go further. I'm going to say it again. God says, y'all allowed me to bring y'all this far. Somebody holler this far. You allowed me to bring you this far. But y'all ain't ready to go further. God sent me by to tell y'all there is more further than this far. Somebody to, I did not come this far just to come this far. Oh, y'all look like y'all scared of, look like y'all scared of more. I'm trying to figure this out that the saints want more gas in the car. Y'all ain't talking to me. More food on the belly. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm finna get in trouble. More hair on the head. I ain't mad at nobody. But I'm saying that if you can want all that more temporal stuff, you got to get to a place in your life that you want more from Jesus. I want more faith. I want more love. I want more joy. I want more authority. I want more folks saved. I want more. So God said, y'all, y'all, y'all let me bring y'all this far. Y'all let me do all that, but y'all ain't really ready to go further. I'm going to check it out. So he bring them on the borderline of Canaan land yes, with a promise. Watch this. But before I can give you the promise, God gives you the peep see. <laughs> God gives you a glimpse of what is to be. To see how bad do you really want it. God gives you a taste. Of what's about to be on the table. Just to see if you will prepare yourself. To sit down clean. And dine at the master's table. 
What I'm trying to tell you, God knows you. God knows that most of us are just talking. But in the midst of our talk, God has a promise. Something better promised for you if you're ready. So what he does, he brings them up and so there's a purpose for the peeping. The peeping is to give us something that the book of Hebrew calls evidence. Evidence that what God said, you will soon see. Even if presently, you don't see what he said. I think I got to do that again. God said, I want y'all to understand that you will see what I said. Even if right now you don't see what I said. Just because you don't see what I said doesn't mean that what I said you ain't going to see. God is getting you ready spiritually to walk into a promise that already is. But I'm trying to tell y'all. There's a revelation in the text because we keep nonchalantly calling it the promised land. I ain't here to play with y'all. I'm here to move you to a whole nother level. We keep calling it the promised land. Where you going, promised land? No, no. You need to add an ED on there. Because there's some education for apprehension. So what he does is that it's the promised land. That's a whole nother place, y'all. It's one thing to have a promised land. What that is, it overflows with milk and honey. But when it's a promised land, that means that it's a land that came from God and the milk and honey has been promised to you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's one thing for somebody to make you a promise. But it's another thing, quite another thing, when you can leave the place, understand that the person that promised it will bring it to pass. God says it is the promised land overflowing with milk and honey. God is getting ready to bless somebody. But y'all got to get ready to go shopping. Can I share this with you? Continually, the text says they went to search out the land. The first thing that God uses when he sends Moses to send the spies is that go and search out the land. And when you look at the text through the Hebrew, that search out the land means shop. Every lady in the house should have got happy just then. God literally said that what I'm getting ready to do, I don't want y'all just to go in watching. I want y'all to go in shopping. I, thought, I, I gotta take this back to Hollywood because ain't no don't look like no shoppers up here in Fort Lauderdale. Y'all see y'all making me do stuff I don't want to do. God, God, God is saying, see, watching, going to watch spy the land. No, no. God said, I want y'all to walk through the land. Shopping. Looking for the good stuff. See, they fronting on me. They know you know good well. If somebody gave you an all expense paid 40 day shopping spree, you won't be going to no sale rack. You will be going by finding the most ex I'm just trying to get some honesty in the house. Cause y'all playing with me. You know good well if he gave you an all expense paid 40 day shopping spree. You coming out of the mall with some red bottoms. Yes you are. Every alligator shoe you can wear you got them every color. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm trying to get you in a shopping mall right now. Forty days, mama. No restrictions, mama. Look at watch this here. Not only can you get stuff for you, you can get stuff for the folk that belong to you. These shoes right here look like they'll fit Junior. I tell you what. I'm trying to set you up to understand. That's how good God is. Search. The word means shop. 
Y'all know how to do this? Walk in with your eyes wide open and your heart filled with expectation. Can I use some ebonics? Ain't no use in going to the mall if you ain't looking for nothing. Am I here? No, I try to get what you understand. Ain't no use going to the mall if you ain't looking for something. What are you going for? I'm looking for something. I need to get y'all the mall. The Lord won't, watch it. The Lord wants us looking for what he's promised to give us. Ebonics coming. It ain't come here yet. But I was looking for it. Anybody in here? I may not see it yet. But they told me that it exists. And I'm looking for it. Y'all ain't talking to me. And y'all do this every day. Y'all know this. Y'all just don't know y'all know this. How many times that you get to the mall looking for something you never saw before. But you saw it on TV. Don't even know if the mall still got it. But you're burning good gas to get there. Why y'all? Because I'm looking for something. God needs to wake up the expectation in us. Great vision never happens until you're ready. Watch this here. To move, to move from opportunity through obstacle. We love opportunity. But as soon as obstacles show up, help me, Pastor, that's when we, we change and shift. Because we, we, we want the fruit, but we don't want the fight. Watch what he does. Watch what he does. God said, I'm bringing y'all into this place, and when y'all get there, when y'all get there, I want y'all, I got three points. I got three points. I'm moving out of here. Y'all already know this. Somebody holler. I, I know this, y'all already. Y'all already know this here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God, God said, I'm bringing y'all in. I'm bringing y'all in the mall. All expense paid. Get all you want. I'm not going to give you any restrictions. But, but, but watch this here. You got to walk with the right credentials. I'm going to get you. I'm going to. Y'all don't know what y'all are doing. Y'all sit there by the machine back. I'll get back in a minute. But you have to bring the right. So holler, somebody holler, holler at me. Right credentials. Right credentials. Watch what he does. So he allows them. Y'all already know this. Whatever it is that you desire from God. If God promised it. You don't need to be worrying About what's promised. See, the rest of the churches around here, don't tell, don't tell Mount Bethel, I love Mount Bethel, I love Pastor, don't, don't tell them. But, but uh, 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 Calvary Outreach and Mount Bethel, everybody else, I'm going to bother with them. Everybody else won't do great vision because they're afraid to lay hold on unusual things. No, no, I'm getting ready to tell y'all something. What they're getting ready to do, what they're getting ready to see, nobody has ever seen it before. So we dwell in the mundane because we're afraid of the unusual. We're afraid to be talked about. We're afraid to call us the funny church. But if you don't have confidence in God, you're going to live and die a normal death. God didn't bless you with Jesus' with blood to die boring. Oh, my God. So God said, look here, I'm getting ready to bless y'all, but look here, y'all can't, be, y'all can't be ashamed of the bags y'all carry. God bless some of y'all. Y'all ashamed to tell, y'all, tell folks y'all got blessed. Let me go on. So what he does, he sends them into the promised land and he allows them to walk around the mall walk around. <laughs> and shop. Yes, sir. Y'all got that? Yes, sir. For whatever they want, bro. Yeah. 
I need y'all to get, I, I can't go further to y'all. For whatever they want, bro. Clothes, fishing poles, it make no difference. Whatever it is in the land, whatever it is in the land, if they got it in the land, God said, I want y'all to check it out. Shop. Because it can be yours. Watch this, watch this. So when they get in, they notice that the land is just as the Lord said. Y'all got it? Just as the Lord said it was. Overflowing with milk. Everything God said would be there is there. Now they never saw it before. All they had to operate on is what he said. That's enough. But what he said turned into what they saw. It was there. And God said, y'all can have it. So much so, the 40-day shopping spree had ended. They bought, came out of there with large grapes on a staff. And then the inventory came. Right. Momo say, what y'all bought back? And give us the report. How was y'all 40-day shopping spree? And he said, well, you know, you were right. Every place that we went, we found everything that you said would be there. We came out of Egypt understanding. We thought that that was the best place possible. But we found out that our God is a true God. Yeah. Everything God said, we saw. It's a good land. It's a land overflowing with milk and honey. It's an incredible mall. They got every shop you could possibly imagine. Y'all understanding me what I'm saying? He said, well, well I, I guess we're ready to bring the rest of us in. They say, hold up, swole up. Us got a problem. Well, what is it? This is the place where faith meets fear and no longer is faith. Everybody got faith till it's time to hold it. Now, y'all ain't hear what I just said. I ain't just say when it's time to have it, when it's time to hold it. When you're standing up against your enemy, your enemy will snatch faith out of your hand. Why? Because he understands faith is a weapon. Y'all ain't talking to me. Faith be scripture, even when it looks like you're outnumbered, no weapon formed against me. That's faith. Faith be scripture, even when the enemy, the devil himself, come up on you. I shall not bow. You shall not bow to anybody and worship nobody but the Lord God. Our Father. Faith speaks in the midst of fear. And the moment that you let fear in your life, it cancels out your faith. Don't just have it, baby. Hold on to it. I just felt the spirit tell me, give you an illustration because you know what? I've seen a lady with a purse, little thing, but if somebody tried to grab it, y'all yes, ain't saying nothing. She locked that thing up. Tell me I'm lying. She locked that thing up, and then she started speaking it to her. I bet no one's going to be going to my bed tonight. All right. yeah. That's right. She's holding on to it. That's how it has to be with your faith. Yeah, Lord, it's just like you said it was. It's just like you said it was. Tell me God has made y'all promises that he didn't keep. Now, he don't operate on your time. But tell me God has made you a promise that he hasn't kept. Lord, it's just like you said. He said, well, what the problem is, Ben? Well, Anak is there. There's haters at the mall. All right. and, and, and I know what you said, how good it is, but let me talk to my peeps. We ain't able to do this. Because in their sight, we were like grasshoppers. As I told you, 13th appreciation, 13, 13, 13, numbers 13, 13, 13, 13, 13 is where most faithful fake Christians live. All right. 
to do I? Because in being, having full confidence in God, we're superstitious about life. 13. 13. Research it. 13 is the number of rebellion. How do I know it? I researched it. Why did I research it? Because I'm New Jerusalem's 13th pastor. So I was pushed up against my own superstition. I said, Lord, why, why, why not three? It's a good number. Why not seven? That's your divine number. Why not eight? That's the number of new beginning. Why not ten? It's complete. Why not twelve? That's order. Thirteen, Lord. Come on, man. Thirteen is the number of rebellion. And New Jerusalem did not, New Jerusalem did call the 13, they didn't know nothing about it. But I agonize. 13, come on, Lord. Black cats. All right. Witches. Yeah. Nobody, nobody want to go to a hotel. Hotels don't even make 13 floors. Right. Y'all do know that, right? Oh, Lord, just the motel crowd. I ain't scared of y'all. Y'all play with me if you want to, eh? Right? I come to make you free. <laughs> Y'all did notice that though, right? There ain't no 13th floor on the elevator. You can't push 13. They don't make that anywhere. Why? Because they're superstitious. 13 is an unlucky number. Lord, gonna make me the 13th pastor, New Jerusalem. Hey man, come on, Lord. What's up with that? The Lord, like, because you can handle it. you mean I can handle it? Somebody heard 13? 13. You can handle it because, because no matter what the world say, yeah. All right, now. Abram, Abraham yes, sir. was yes, sir. the 13th of his generation. Yes, Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, Lord, I'm almost there. Then he turned around and said, not only that, Jesus was the 13th of his generation. Abraham and Jesus? I can roll with that. But what I'm going to do about this thing of rebellion? He said, I call you as the 13th because you are going to rebel against rebellion. That's why I'm crazy like I am. Every time I see something don't look like God, I challenge it in Jesus' name. Y'all ain't talking to me. And I don't care if they put me out. I don't care if they don't invite me back. My job is to rebel against rebellion. Praise this whole thing. Y'all all right? 13. So the Lord says, y'all came in to this land. You came into this land. Y'all got your shopping spree. I got y'all here. And y'all scared. Hotel, last one. Hotel, why? 13. They fooling y'all. Because if you're in the hotel, yes. no 13. All right. But if you stand outside the hotel, uh. and count floors like your teacher taught you, there is a 13th floor. And they told you it was 14. And you glad because it ain't 13. But you're still paying the same. I digress. Y'all are faced with the promise of God, but you're afraid. Fear. Whatever it is that scares us from believing God for the big things. That's what I came by. I know Pastor Brown, he's he not a small-minded, small-thinking, small-believing man. He and his wife believe that God is. Yes, yes, One more time, y'all. Yes. And he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. I'm going to give you three points. I'm going to get ready to leave you. But there is a place called intention that you have to begin to dwell in. If anything tangible, spiritual, gonna ever happen in your life. I gotta make it plain to y'all. Anybody who got a boyfriend, that didn't just happen. Amen. 
Somebody had to intend to do something. Amen. I should have got praying. Should have been amen. amen. But that's why some of y'all ain't got nobody because ain't nobody got this. They, they are allowed to laugh, aren't they? It's part of my... Now, y'all ain't gonna forget this here. The only reason, you see, I gotta do this because y'all keep, keep tripping with me. The only reason Jay-Z married Beyonce because she told him you gotta put a ring on this bar. I am not going to apologize for going to the mall on a shopping spree that God sent me on yes, sir. and have you criticize what it is God said I can have. Amen. I'm not afraid to take the limits off of God. And if God said I can have anything I want, just cause your vision is small, I'm not gonna minimize my faith to fit your fear. I wish I had some help in here. So Caleb still the people. Caleb say, hold up now. Don't let them put fear in you. He tried to get them to turn and go the right way. But they said, we not able. Because in their sight, we're like grasshoppers. This and my last three points. And my three points. Yeah. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. What you say? We're like grasshoppers. They're giants. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. What you call them? I call them giants. And we're like grasshoppers in their sight. One of the saddest things on the planet is when the saints start speaking for the devil. The giants ain't said nothing. We all up in the giants head saying what we look like to them and the giants haven't said anything. Let me prove it to you. It's in my three points. Y'all ready? First thing y'all need to understand that's in the text, you'll find this out. The first thing that you ought to believe God for the evidence of the promise when he sends you in on a 40-day shopping spree, no matter where it be, whatever promise God put in your life, whatever promise God put in your life, that he's going to bless you, that he's going to get you married, that he's going to heal you, whatever big promise that God puts in your life, first of all you need to do is come up against this people. First thing you need to know, that God put you in enemy territory for 40 days and you're still alive. Y'all all right? No, 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 no. See, I'm from Liberty City, Miami, the ghetto, the projects. I'm trying to figure out, if you that bad, how can it be I be on your territory for 40 days and still walk out with the biggest grapes I ever seen? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Not only did God promise them, God protected them. Don't y'all know you ought to be able to serve a God? that allow you to walk into enemy territory and take everything that the enemy got, not only what they stole, but everything they got. And you walk out of there, not creeping and sleeping, but God is covering you. Mama. Woo! Yes, God know how to make you invisible and invincible. Yes, Folks that bigger than you can't handle you. He took them in, beloved, and when they went in, they came in 40 days in enemy territory. Somebody holler evidence. God gave them evidence. He gave them evidence that they can talk and they can taste. Glory to God. Is there anybody in the room can point to something that the Lord has already done? I told y'all, y'all already know this, y'all. Y'all just don't know you know it. I said, is there anybody in here can point to something that God has already done? No, no, I know there's things that you want God to do. But I'm talking about, can anybody point 
for something tangible that the Lord has already done. I said done. I said done. I ain't hear enough noise in here. Don't y'all understand that come Thanksgiving meal, I get happy with the doing, but I get ecstatic about the done. The turkey is done. The greens are done. The cornbread is done. The yams are done. I start dancing around the house, not because of the doing, but because of the done. He had done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. He has made my enemies leave me alone. He has done. Every time I think about what God can do, I'm pushed by the done. I'm pushed by what he's already done. When I think about what he's done, I get excited about what he will do. Anybody in here pushed by the done? He done it again. He done it again. That's your God. 40 day shopping spree. Glory to God. He did it before. He'll do it again. Somebody say yeah. And then the final test. You got 40 days in enemy territory. You got evidence that you can told and taste. But the final test is that you're going to be tested on what you choose to remember. I stop by to tell you, all of us have a grand test of fear and faith. If you're fearful, you walk by your sight. But if you're faithful, you walk by what he said. I stop by to tell you, you got a choice to make. The choice is you got to believe what you go remember. I stop by to tell you, the giants they remembered, but they forgot that the Lord said it's a promised land. They forgot that the Lord said it's a land that you ain't got to work for that I will give you. I know my God and whatever God say he gonna give you, the Lord will. He's good for it. God is good for it. God is good for it. If he say he'll heal you, God's good for it. Say he'll bless you, God's good for it. Say he'll save your family, God's good for it. Is there anybody here that was down and out but the Lord pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. You're dancing now. You're singing now. You're walking now. You're blessed now. God's good for it. Say ya! Oh, God have mercy. I ain't worried about what y'all say. God's good for it. That's what Caleb said. That's what Joshua said. If y'all acting like the mall wasn't good, y'all keep on with it. But I'm gonna turn and tell Moses, I wanna go again. I've been one time, I wanna go again. I'm ready to go back in to the promised land. Go take you 40 years, but I'm going back in. Somebody say yeah. Let me get you ready. Let me get you ready. Y'all getting too old. To not chance incredible things for God. Anybody could do normal stuff. But I like the prophet, the prophet Bonnie Reed. Let's give him something to talk about. Watch this, man. When we huddle up here at Calvary Outreach, can I get a chair? Yes, sir. When we huddle up here at Calvary Outreach, it's where the spiritual insanity ought to happen. Watch it. 
when we get in here, we ought to be pastor. What the Lord said this week. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Pastor. What the Lord say he got at the mall this week. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Pastor. Did the Lord turn you on to any good sales? Y'all ain't saying nothing again here. When y'all come together, Calvary Outreach, y'all ought to be sitting down looking for what exciting things that the Lord want to do on this avenue, on this street, with this congregation, so that we'll turn this world upside We ain't come here to do normal stuff. We came here to do extraordinary things. Watch this here. So when people see us carrying the blessings, y'all ain't saying nothing. We need for folk to have blessings people can see. When they see us carrying the blessings, y'all ain't hearing me. When somebody come in here and get healed, they can see y'all carrying the blessing. Glory to God. Y'all hear me what I'm saying? Huh? Then the buzz begins. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. The buzz begins. I got to help them because they, they already know this. They just don't know they know it. Um, when you see somebody dressed nice, you go like, hmm. Where you get that tie from? See, y'all missing me. Y'all think I'm talking about clothes. Let me, let me make it plain for you. Hmm. Where you get that healing at? Excuse me, I don't mean to bother you, yeah. but where you get all that joy from? Yeah. Y- I, I, y'all ain't hear me what I'm saying to you. Y'all ain't hear me what I'm saying to you. Y'all ain't hear me what I'm saying to you. Mama, 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 every time I see you, you be looking good. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Will you serve the Jesus I got? Stress don't stress you. Trouble don't trouble you. Grief don't grieve you. And every time you see me, sunshine or storm, I'm going to be looking good because he keep it good. Somebody say it. That's who he is. That's who he is. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the one that opens the store and closes the store. He's the beginning and he's the end. He got the keys to the mall, y'all. 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 And the thing about God, the ball don't close. It's open 24 hours, seven days a week. Let me get intentional. We see, look, I'm crazy on purpose. Now y'all will read your Bible. The, everybody who God calls, God calls them to unusual circumstance. Watch this. Bondage is normal. So he calls somebody outside of the normal to deliver them from normal to the extraordinary. And he does it over and over and over again because sane folk can't stay spiritual. When you pay your tithes, can I tell y'all the truth? I remember back in the day, me and Sister Anderson I uh, had to go to consumer credit counseling. See, we don't mind telling you the truth. I need you to deliver. Ain't none of y'all gonna worry me. When it's consumer uh, credit counseling, watch this. We thought our stuff was bad. Bad for us. We thought it was bad. We got down there to North Miami Beach, sat in front of that little lady. She said, y'all, y'all, y'all really wanna do this? She said, yeah, we wanna do this here. Wanna come on up, uh, up out of debt. And she, she took our little credit cards 
And I watch her in her ashtray just snip them up with her, her scissors. I'm like, what in the heaven you doing? Some of y'all get it on the way home. Then she gave us a plan. She said in the plan, you guys okay here? You're okay here? She says, this donation thing. What is that? I'm attending the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church in Hallandale. I said, well, th those are our tithes. She says to us, was well, far too much money. You, you're going to have to cut that out. What the world supposed to say? All she saw was the dollars. And she said, you need to cut, you're going to have to cut that. I told her, baby, that ain't going to happen. No, no. And it, the way we came out, I believe, was that day. When I took that off the table, I said, no, no, that's not going to happen. And let me tell you why. Y'all ain't going to believe it. Let me tell you why. I went to my pastor as a new preacher. And I said, pastor, I don't understand this tithe thing. And in my kind-hearted flesh, I said, pastor, I really can't see how God would make a grandmama on fixed income give 10% of at least 10% of her income I just can't see that my flesh my nice flesh yes, I'm looking out for the elders I got a visit from God that night and said why are you messing with my business watch this and he gave me his lesson said bring your tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat tithes and all in my storehouse saith boy you don't know nothing about this you don't understand that our God can have people do better on the 90% with me than the 100% on their own and you a prime case so when I told that lady I done had an encounter with God I'm going to keep on tithing Amen. nothing you can say going to stop me from tithing she said it doesn't make sense I said let me tell you this I drove a 1983 Honda Accord that I bought new Clyde got old Lord have mercy thank you Jesus it was his 13th year Amen. good God Almighty and I paid our tithe. God, my witness. Come around the street of 20th Street in Miramar. Every time that thing, Clyde made a right turn, that thing would turn off. Boom, boom, boom. Crank it up. Come, boom, right back up. You go, you make a right turn. Boom. Clyde gone again. I'm like, what the what, Lord? What? And I said, Lord, I paid my tithe. You got to do something. Absolute true story. You got to do something. <clears throat> right turn. Boom, 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 boom. Kept going. Right turn. Boom, boom. Kept going. Right turn. Kept going. Clyde didn't go to one mechanic other than what I call the messianic mechanic. That's why I'm crazy. Because I serve a God. I know what he. Y'all playing. Baby came into New Jerusalem with a hole in his heart. Came down for prayer. Serious business. I don't scream for no miracle. I never saw Jesus do it. I don't. I just don't. I ain't bothered with nobody, but I don't. I never saw Jesus do it. I don't do it. I don't squint my eyes. Do what y'all want to do. I don't squint. I don't squint my eyes for no miracle. Because I never saw Jesus do it. We walk up there and do what he said. Talk, Lord. Give me a promise. These signs shall follow them that believe. You believe, don't you, boy? Yeah, Lord, you know I do. 
one of those things they, they shall lay hands on the sick and the rest of that ain't my business two weeks later she come to New Jerusalem laughing and crying we already know what that means what the doctor saw he don't see anymore Now most congregation be shouting, New Jerusalem be like, yeah, whatever. You know why? Because we see God do it over and over again. Healing ain't a big thing to God. Y'all want the class? Can I, I don't know. Y'all want the class? Can I get another chair? Two more chairs? Can I get two more chairs real quick? Y'all, no, let me, then we want to go home. Y'all don't need this. Y'all, 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 y'all want a quick class in, in miracles? Y'all got a promise. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna follow the vision and pass the that God give pastor. It's a good man. I said amen. Good man, good man, good man, good man. It's a good man. Good house, good house. Come on. Come on. Clap for yourself. Good house, good house. Y'all can't be scared. You can't be scared. When God do unusual things with you, baby, you got to be, be okay with folks thinking you're weird. Let me tell you how God does this. Lucia, you want to follow me with the, follow me with the microphone so I can move, but they can hear me. Y'all want it for real? Look at Y'all be tripping. No, say, tell them. They know. We just know. We from the Church of God. Uh, they say, what, what, y'all, what, y'all, what y'all doing over there with that Baptist boy? They ain't got nothing. They don't say that no more. They don't, they, no, my holiness friends don't say that anymore. Because while the bishops are looking for oil, I already done cast that demon out in Jesus' name. No, y'all laughing. I, I, no, I... I I'm preaching a funeral. The second time I had one in the choir stand doing that. I said it in the choir stand. Doing all that. Th- boom, boom, come, boom, boom, out, out. I'm preaching a funeral. And a possessed one comes through the door. At the funeral. Stands in front of the people's loved one's casket. And cutting up. See. Y'all saying preachers won't do nothing. Me, I'm crazy. Come on, that's right. I stopped preaching. Came down. Pointed at that demon. <laughs> Walk that demon out to the other sidewalk. Left it there. And finish preaching. <laughs> Amen. Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. But who are you? Them demons know of you playing. So they can underestimate me if they want to, but, but I got hole in this preachers now. They they understand. Well, y'all around here looking for the oil. That demon already gone. Y'all may well fry some chicken with that. Dr. Brown, I'm going to do this because I want y'all to be blessed. I, I, need them to, I need them to get biblical. They got the Bible in them, but I need to get, get, get biblical, intentional, actual when it comes to following the man, woman of God, family of God, good man, and the incredible things you all can do together. Y'all can't be scared of that because when y'all together, they're going to start talking about y'all. When y'all together, when y'all not normal anymore, they're going to start talking about y'all. Y'all got to be all right with that. Watch this. And they can move on their assumption, but they can't deny the evidence. So let me show you what power. I ain't giving y'all no power other than the power that God gave you. Let me show you what God does. Why miracles are easy. God said, Abram, you'll do now. You know, I, I'm watching you. I know what you really want. You always wanted the son of your own. I'm going to give you one. Abraham thought that God came too late because his body was dead. And then the Lord said, that's an impossible thing, mama. 
God waited until he thought his body was dead. And then God came and asked this question, is there anything? Y'all got it. One more time. Is there anything? That's broad, y'all. Is there anything too hard for God? Watch this. So what God does and what God gives us the power to do, come on, watch this. Come and get this side right here. If this is cancer, your body messed up, Name any one of those diseases. Y'all heard what I just said? Yes, Name any one of those diseases that comes from the doctor's report. Any one of those diseases. If this is a relationship you're praying for, but it's all jacked up. If this is a son or a daughter that you can't talk to anymore, but you need God to step in. Yes, if this is an M possible situation in your life that drives most Christians crazy. Here's what God does, mama. Miracle for God. Is there anything too hard for me? Y'all said no. When your body jacked up with cancer, here's what God does. Because I'm God, if I choose to do so, a miracle for God is no more difficult than moving furniture. God, cancer, God, cancer. Somebody say, move it, God. Okay, I think I will. God start rearranging things in your body so that when the doctor come back, y'all already know this, y'all just don't know y'all. When the doctor come back, the doctor go, it's gone. It ain't like it used to be. Something has changed. What did you do? I don't know what you did, but just keep on doing it. Is there anything? Anything. So the next time that you confront it with a bad relationship, a child that won't that won't behave, that won't obey, all that crazy stuff, you got the same power. To rearrange furniture. And that's what faith is. I don't care what it looked like before I lay hands on it. I come to rearrange furniture. Glory to God. Last thing, but it's going to cost you something. Caleb, Joshua, go in. Shopping spree. I told you I'm going to cost you something. Gonna cost you something. Faith is the currency of heaven. Your your opinion, nothing purchases anything in heaven but faith. You can't buy a bubble gum in America with a ruble. You're going to need a dollar. Y'all all right? So when you come to God, Hebrew 13, Hebrew 11, when you come to God, you must first believe that he is. And he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. For without faith. I'm close. So when y'all get ready to pay for all that stuff y'all got on your 40 day shopping spree, <laughs> you pull out your car. You want to know if you're going to swipe it or do you have a chip? If you got a chip, they don't want you to swipe. God have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you why. Because God is so good. He makes the bad things good. We have charges on our account. 
from the gas station for winning our account, took money out of the account. Y'all all right? We got the money back. We ain't worried about it. I knew we were going to get back. When we came up there, ain't no problem. I know they're going to come back. Everything got, everything got to come back. But when we went in, I, I need it because I'm nosy like that. I need to find out what happened. Yes, sir. I went back to the gas station because this is just me. I want to alert them. What happened? And maybe you need to check your staff because somebody in here might have helped it happen because I was on the inside. Y'all all right? I love what the lady said. The lady says, Sir, my staff is trustworthy. That was blessing me. I like that. She said, My staff is trustworthy. I've seen them give things back to people, so I'm really not concerned that they did anything. I'm cool too. I said, well, then what happened? She says, maybe you swiped when you should have chipped. Said, what that mean? She says, because when you swipe, the transaction stays up there. And people go up there before it's made good and they snatch it. Y'all ain't hear me, I'm giving me some preaching here. She say, she say when you swipe it, they, they go up there and, and, and they can still scroll and get it while it's up there. She say, but when you chip it, as soon as you chip it, when they say remove your card, she say it's done. It's already gone through. So my job tonight is to get some saints to stop swiping and start chipping. If you ask God to do it, God don't wait a long time. He'll do it immediately. He'll bless you immediately. Somebody say it. I've been on the 40-day shopping spree, and I'm going again. I'm going again. I'm cleaning out my trunk. I don't want no car seat in there. I need room for stuff. God's going to bless you. Y'all are mine. I'd like to pray with you. Father, in this house, in this building, Increase the shoppers in the house. They know how to do this. They know how to move in intention. And move with expectation. They know how to get <laughs> excited when they get a deal. And Lord, help them to know that even though they chip it, they still didn't have to pay for it. Because you paid it all. You got the accounts covered. Huh? So Father, I want to thank you for what you're going to do with this Calvary Outreach collection of shoppers. They're not afraid to walk off the land. They're not afraid to go into enemy territory. They're not afraid to taste the blessings and tote the blessings. And Father, Father, they're not afraid to go back again. Deliver them from a Sunday morning mentality. Let them know they got power every day of the week. Thank you for cohesiveness. Thank you for courage. Thank you for vision and clarity. Thank you for bravery. Thank you, God, for the souls that are going to be saved. The relationships that's going to be mended. The men that are going to be found. The women that are going to be blessed. God, we thank you for the children that's going to be empowered. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name. We ready. We ready. We got on our comfortable shoes. Let's go and shopping today. In 
name of Jesus. Yeah. There is power. 